What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody down there? Hello. I'm Scott. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're feeling healthy, and I hope you're keeping safe. I'm doing really well today because today I'm going to talk to you all about this very pink Paul Reed Smith seven string guitar. Anyways, if you're new here and you like these kind of videos, you'll probably like my channel. So go ahead and subscribe, blah, 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 all that stuff. And if you like this video anytime, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. All right, so why am I making this video about this guitar? Well, this guitar probably out of all of my guitars gets the most questions. People always ask me, yo, Scott, what is up with that pink PRS? How'd you get that finish? Where'd you get that guitar? What pickups are in it? Tell me all about that guitar. And that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna talk all about this guitar. We'll do some close-up shots. We'll go in deep. I'll tell you about how this guitar came to life. And then I'll also play it for you so you can hear some tones. Cool? Cool? All right, so before I get into the what of this guitar, let me just talk a little bit about the why. Why did I customize this guitar the way I did? Back in like springtime 2020, I can't remember exactly when, I got an idea to customize a baritone PRS. So I have a Mike Mushok, 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 so I don't know how to pronounce his name, the dude from Stained. I have one of his old signature SE baritone PRS SE guitars, and I wanted to customize it. I got the idea and the inspiration for that guitar from Chris Kane of Bad Wolves, total sweetheart, nicest guy in the world. I reached out to him and I said, hey, Chris, can you let me know how you customize your guitar? Give me some tips, give me some pointers. He was nice enough to get back to me and show me how he did it and let me know some of the difficulties that he had and things to look out for when I was gonna customize my own. So I took his guitar and his information as inspiration and I went to work and I made the orange, which I'm calling the cannibalized PRS, which I think looks pretty cool. It sounds pretty rad and I had a lot of fun doing it. All right, so let's get into the what. What exactly is this guitar? This guitar started life out as a 2019 PRS SVN. The SVN I don't think is an acronym. I don't think it stands for anything. I think it's just like a short form for seven. It's PRS's Custom 24 seven string SE model. So the very first thing that I did to this guitar and I was inspired by the Mark Holcomb SE that I owned previously was sand down the back of the neck to a satin finish. I gotta say, once you get used to the satin feeling neck, it's really hard to go back to the sort of super glossy necks. The satin neck just feels so comfortable. Your hand doesn't stick. It moves around, it slides around very easily, and it just feels good. It's really easy to do. All I did was take some of that painter's tape, you know, that green or blue painter's tape. I taped off the edges of the fretboard. I created sort of a shape design in the back of the headstock, just like the Mark Holcomb one had. And I taped off around the body and sanded away. And I didn't actually use sandpaper. I used one of those 3M sort of scotch bright, whatever they call them, those pad things that you use to clean pots and pans works really well to take off the top coat of the finish of the guitar without being too abrasive. It's really easy to do. All you need is a little bit of pressure, rubbing the pad back and forth evenly across the neck until you get the finish that you want. All right, so the next thing that I did to the guitar was the most obvious thing, which was start to put the vinyl on top of the guitar. If you're interested and wanna know how to apply vinyl to one of your guitars, I have another video where I give you my five tips on what to think about and what to consider when doing this. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put the link in the description below and I'll probably put the link up here somewhere if you wanna see that video. But long story short, I start with the headstock and the reason why you wanna start with the headstock is because it uses less vinyl, it's a little bit easier to work with, and if you make a mistake, it's easy to start over again without too much wastage, and it gives you a chance to practice a bit. If you've never wrapped a guitar with vinyl before, or if you've never worked with vinyl before, be patient with yourself. I can almost promise you and guarantee you that the first time that you do it, you will make a mistake, so plan for extra materials. The next thing I did was wrap the body of the guitar. Now this takes some effort, this takes a little bit of time, probably take close to an hour just to wrap the top of the guitar to do it properly. So my next consideration for this guitar was hardware. I knew I wanted black hardware because the original guitar came with nickel hardware and it just didn't look quite right with the style and the design that I was going with. So instead I ended up replacing the bridge altogether and bought this bridge, which is a hip shot bridge. I spent a bunch of time researching the right tuners for PRS SE guitars and I found the model of Godot tuners that I really liked. They're locking tuners, they're great tuners, they're fantastic tuners. Highly recommend upgrading your SE if you have a PRS SE with these tuners at the very least. All right, moving on, let's talk about my nuts. So I popped the nut off, I did a bunch of measurements, I went on the GraphTech website and I talked to the GraphTech customer service, they were fantastic, and we figured out what nut I needed to replace this to get a tusk nut. Once I got the nut, it was a little bit too tall, which is pretty normal, that happens. You have to sand them down a little bit, spent a bit of time sanding it, wasn't that much work. Popped it on there with a little bit of super glue. Totally worth the like 10 or $15 upgrade. If you own a PRS SE and you wanna do some upgrades along with the tuners, 
highly recommend taking a look at Tusk Nuts. And the final two things I want to talk about are the guts of the guitar. To me, the most exciting part of the upgrade of this guitar are the electronics and the pickups. First, let me just talk about the electronics. I wanted to try something a little bit different than what I normally do. I can solder. I'm not the greatest soldering guy in the world, but I wanted to try something a bit different this time. And I got something from Mad Hatter, which make these solderless systems that you can drop into your guitar using just like a tiny screwdriver to plug in with these tiny little connectors, really easy to use. They come with different wiring diagrams for different you know, guitars and pickup configurations. And it didn't take me very long, maybe 10, 15 minutes to you know, wire it up properly and get it all installed. Headache, pain-free, no noise. I can't recommend these products enough. They're a little bit on the expensive side, especially if you're comparing against buying just raw components and soldering it yourself, but they are very high quality fantastic products. And the nice thing about this setup is that the tone knob is a push-pull CTS pot. So when you pull that sucker up, it splits the coil of my pickups and I get a fairly versatile sounding guitar. So this gives me sort of that single coil sound when it's up and it's back to humbuckers when it's down. And last, but certainly not least, my favorite part of this guitar are these beautiful, these amazing, incredible, bare knuckle Ragnarok pickups. Not only do these pickups look amazing with this guitar, in my humble opinion, because they have the same carbon fiber finish as the vinyl that I've chosen to go with, they sound phenomenal. Anybody that knows me and watches my channel know I love bare knuckle pickups. If I had to describe bare knuckle pickups in five words, it would be the best pickups ever made. And I mean, come on, look at them. Even if they sounded like shit, I would still love them because they look awesome in this guitar, but they don't sound like shit. They sound amazing. And the very last thing, the final, the finishing touches, the icing on the cake, the cherry on top that I wanna mention about this awesome guitar is the headstock. So as you can see, I have a PRS signature logo, which is obviously not from PRS. I found this aftermarket. There's a few of them out there. If you wanna find them for project builds, I put that on top of there because I thought it looked awesome. I have white ones, I have black ones, and I even have some gold ones. I was thinking about doing a gold one, but I went with the black one because I think it fits the overall theme and it matches nicely with the rest of the guitar. And the very last finishing touch of this guitar was to stroke my ego and it's a truss rod cover with my signature on it. I think it looks great. I did the same thing on my orange PRS, but with a white truss rod cover and I think it looks pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna shut the hell up now. I've talked enough. Let me play this thing so you can hear some tones.
All right, everyone, that is it. Thank you for watching the video. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed and you like these kind of videos, there's a good chance that you will dig my channel. So please consider subscribing. It helps me grow the channel. And if you've been here before and you're already a subscriber, you are my hero. I love you. Thank you for your support. Until next time, remember, stay safe and stay heavy. Peace out.